Welcome back to the Market Analysis and uh, I am joined by Samuel Gishoy who is the Head of Business Development at NCBA Investment Bank and Faith Mwangi who is also a research analyst to help us understand how has the markets been behaving in the first quarter. We are talking January to March and I just want to get their first quick reactions when they look to the markets on how they see the quarter behaving and why we're seeing these sort of trends that are happening. Gishoy, let me start with you. What's your quick comment when you look at the markets through the three months? Um, well, of course, the the Ukraine conflict or the is actually causing mass exit. So mm -hmm. we've seen quite a bit of uh, foreign investor exit. Yeah. Um, it's been sustained. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming from the background of an expectation that we would see foreign foreigners return to the market okay. as we went into 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but from October, we still had you know the COVID-19. Uh, had already caused a lot of foreign exits. So that has sort of cushioned the market from much you know, higher decline yeah. compared to what happened when the COVID pandemic hit. Okay. Uh, because a lot of the foreign funds had already exited anyway and were being expected to come back. Mm. Um, the local investor cannot sustain the market, mm -hmm. uh, you know, b based on the fact that uh, over 70% of our market is foreign, foreign controlled. Yeah. Uh, that is trade, the trading side of it. Okay. So that has uh, caused, you know, a bit of downward trend on the market. Yeah. But that said, uh, it's not as 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 much as we expected. But yeah. being an election year, yeah. again, we are seeing very low volumes. Okay. Um, traditionally, in election years, the market rallies mm -hmm. up to the point of the elections, mm -hmm. um, usually by up to even twenty percent. Yeah. This year, we've seen seen a decline, a bit of a decline. Yeah. Um, and even those rallies are usually on very low volumes mm -hmm. because, of course, there's a bit of investor apathy. Okay. So that means we are in unprecedented times. It's okay. something we haven't seen. The volumes are much lower than we've seen in election years. Okay. So it's, it's a very, very slow market at the moment. All right, fair enough, Samuel, right there. And I would also want to get your quick reactions as well, Faith, from your observations, how the quarter has been, anything that uh, Samuel has left out? Um, I would like to say it's also not just not a Kenya problem. I think we've seen this in all emerging markets yeah. where foreign investors are actually rebalancing their portfolios. So what we're seeing is investment being uh, still retained in the blue chip um, and high market cap companies as a smaller company suffer uh, as foreign investors are now rebalancing their markets. So we've seen the same thing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We've seen the same thing in Egypt. So it's not unique to Kenya at the moment. Okay. Let me stay with you, Faith, and when I look at uh, the losers over the three months, I see the likes of Kenya Power, mm -hmm. TP Serena, Everady, Sentem, and Wichumi. I don't know whether you have any counter that you'd want to comment on on some of the losers that we have seen over the three months. Um, in general, for all the lo losers, one of the things that we are seeing for all of them is that they are in loss-making positions. Okay. And specifically for Kenya Power, which has lost 24%, yeah. what we've seen with Kenya Power is that they are struggling with collection of revenue, mm -hmm. they are struggling with debt repayments. So in terms of their profitability, Kenya Power has been struggling. Okay. And we have yet to see any structural changes that would give investors confidence mm -hmm. that Kenya Power would be able to return to a high cash flow position and high profitability. Okay. Let me come to you, Samuel. Let's talk about the gainers. I see Khan General, who are hoping 103% rise, Stand Big Crown Paint, BOC Kenya, and even BAT, well performed over the three months. What's your comment? Any counter you want to pick on? Um, not necessarily. I think uh, Khan in General, I would look at the fact that they are very well positioned in the yeah. motorcycle industry, mm -hmm. which is really growing. I think they have the TVS, mm -hmm. and most of the spare parts I would be expect would be coming in, you know, through mm -hmm. Ghana in general. Yeah. Of course, they have, uh, that means that there are certain investors seeing an opportunity there and taking it. Yeah. But um, looking more generally at the gainers and losers, mm -hmm. it's easy to notice that um, there are very few blue chips, if any, in that, in that in that list None at all. and that mm -hmm. is a very strong indicator as mm -hmm. to the fact that um, most of the activity now has gone to uh, shares that would not normally we would not normally see on this list mm -hmm. uh, it's gone off the blue chips and off the high volume traders yeah. and that is a very it's very indicative of low foreign participation okay. because remember if you look at what is now on that list apart from say Stanbic and BAT yeah. uh, who would have you know a foreign interest mm -hmm. uh, the rest have no foreign or very little foreign interest because of the deal sizes that they offer. Okay. So that is also indicative of the sort of volumes we're dealing with. It means that the big boys, in as much as they might be the movers, mm -hmm. uh, have not seen much in terms of gain or loss. 
So it's more stagnation. They may have lost a little bit, but not significantly. Okay. Um, but even with those losses, for anybody who is sitting on, on, on resources, on funds, then it would be a good time to look at them. Um, okay at this point in time. Yeah. All right. Let me stay with you again, Samuel, on this. And I would like you to comment on the shilling because we have seen it declining in terms of value over the time, over the three months. I don't know. What's your quick comment on that as well? Uh, well, January to March, of course, um, this is dividend season. Yeah. Um, most of these dividends, remember, foreigners own a lot of <laughs> what we have. So Absolutely. naturally, they'll, that will push demand for the dollar up. Mm -hmm. There's inflationary pressure, especially on oil. Mm -hmm. That is pushing again um, the, the demand for the dollar yeah. because then again, um, we need to spend more on the dollar you okay. know, to import our oil and all that. Right. And so that naturally means that mm -hmm. uh, the dollar will, the shilling will be under pressure mm -hmm. because of that demand. Okay. Um, remember, we also have our debt payments um, mm -hmm. and that also is another another Factor. pressure on the shilling yeah so uh, there's a lot of pressure on the shilling okay. um and uh, in as much as cbk has you know tried to protect it as much as possible and also you know we're starting to see something like fuel subsidies coming in which again may not be sustainable if mm. you know oil prices continue to go down mm -hmm. so th there's a lot of pressure on the shilling okay. um hopefully it will hold but uh, we can expect it to continue. All right, continue. Faith, let me come to you because, you know, that's one of the factors we've seen the shilling really decline in terms of value. And we have also seen uh, other factors like the oil prices now going up. <laughs> I don't know what would be your message to any investor who comes to you as an analyst and asks you, should I be worried? Should I uh, uh, pause on my investment, take a breather or something of that sort? <laughs> what would be your advice looking at all these factors affecting it? Maybe you could comment on these oil prices. Are we about to see the market shaking in its own? Um, I think we are about to see a lot of producer pressure uh, okay. in terms of price because we do have uh, manufacturers, we do have producers who rely on fuel. Mm -hmm. And so that will likely push um, cost of producing goods up and will actually end up seeing inflation rise. Right. So one of the factors that investors should be keen on is getting investments that would be able to cover for the inflation mm -hmm. pressure that we'll be seeing over the next couple of months. Yeah. But more importantly, it's to be able to look at companies that will be able to sustain demand mm -hmm. So the likes of Safaricom, even if fuel prices increase, people are still going to use airtime. Yeah. Uh, the banking sector, especially the larger banks, will be able to survive this time mm -hmm. because manufacturers and industry players will still need credit. Individuals will still need credit. Yeah. So the thing to look for at the moment is companies that will be able to uh, ride out this wave. Okay. So I'd say smaller companies would actually be in a more high pressure position mm -hmm. because they are likely to be able to raise as much credit as they need. Okay. And they also will likely be unable to meet the demands that uh, will be coming up in the next couple of months you know it's interesting you mentioned banks but the the, the last results from the banks all banks actually across the board were yeah. very happy all the way to the bank I don't see them here uh, I don't know what why they're not here I don't know who would ask to comment on that whether it's you well, somehow well, maybe <laughs> well uh, again as I said uh, most of this will be big blue chips okay so mm. then again you'll see the volumes in terms of say the foreign exits yeah but the price pressure is not high enough to push the prices down, okay. you know, low enough for them to appear on the list. Yeah. Uh, neither have they gone up. Uh, what is interesting is uh, we have, this year was a very good dividend year. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very good. In yeah. fact, it means that um, it's a compelling reason for mm -hmm. anybody who is looking for where returns yeah. will be. Mm -hmm. Because if you're looking at uh, some of these blue chips, mm -hmm. the, you know, the bigger banks, uh, the tech companies yeah. Yeah. being um, at in a buy zone, meaning they've d declined in in, in price, mm -hmm. and they're paying dividends to the tune of eight percent and ab above yeah. for some of them. Yeah. Then that definitely tells you that um, buying them would mean you're going to beat inflation with the dividend, okay. given that they've given a good dividend, mm -hmm. and you're going to be positioning yourself yeah. because as soon as the you know global economy starts to to to, to become stable, yeah. then naturally those funds will flow back in okay. mm -hmm. uh, into the market. So right. you'll be positioning yourself for a very good return. Okay. So I think this is a time for the brave. This is a time for, <laughs> for those guys who say, you know what, I'm contrarian, I'm going to take this position and yeah. sit on it. Okay. Because we don't expect that much more downward pressure. We've seen the likes of Safaricom sort of stagnate at you yeah. know, it's current 34, 50, 35 shillings. You know, just fluctuating within a certain range, All right. which is a good sign. Okay. Yeah.
I see Faith agreeing with you, so I will not even ask for that comment. But Faith, mm -hmm. we're headed to the elections, yeah. and a lot of people, they, they get a bit jittery, especially when it comes to investing. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone says, you know, it's time. It's time that you get there bravely. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's your comment on this, especially on, with regards to elections. For mm -hmm. all investors who are watching, what would be your advice? Um, my advice would, would be similar uh -huh. in that uh, this, this would be the time to invest. Okay. But again, similar to every other election year we've seen, mm -hmm. um, investors need to be keen on investing on companies that will be able to ride out the wave. Because one of the things that we know about our elections is that they're unpredictable, especially in the run up to August. Yeah. We're not sure how the next couple of months will look like. So mm -hmm. it's important to invest in companies that will be able to ride out the election wave. Yeah. So I'd say being in blue chip companies at this point would actually be the best option for investors. Wow. Goodness, Lord, I don't know whether I have left any parting shot from you, Ishohe. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think uh, we need to really emphasize that. Uh -huh. This is a very good time. It's a good time. For somebody, especially those holding, you know, portfolios yeah. that are mm. sitting on some very toxic stocks. Yeah. You know, those ones that have sustained, sustainably been in loss position, are mm -hmm. trading at very low prices. Yeah. And they're holding, you know, and they're, the chances of them recovering could be another five, six years. Yeah. Um, they are also in a position where they can say, let me sell off, you know, let me clean out these toxic ones, yeah. position myself in those that will most likely, you know, re regain value very quickly immediately mm. after. Okay. Um, those that did it before the COVID or during the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. actually made a lot of money because That's then true. they bought things like Safaricom at what, 26 shillings yeah. and sold it at 40 something. Wow. But by exiting the toxic ones, then you sort of position your portfolio in mm -hmm. a way that it will re regain value. So this is a time to be talking to your stockbroker and looking at what are the best options <laughs> and yeah, take, take, the, take the plunge. I must get a parting shot from you as well. <laughs> I would say on the elections, I'd say investors have actually priced in the election. So contrary wow. to other previous years where elections would be priced in closer to the date, mm -hmm. I think given our historical uh, placement in terms of elections and uh, what we've seen before, yeah. investors this time round have actually priced in elections. Wow. So for those ones that are waiting for the prices to be lower, unless a significant change happens within the next couple of months, mm -hmm. investors have actually priced in the cost of elections already. So it's wow. time to make the decisions. There you have it. It's time to make a kill. Be brave, as Samuel has put it. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. Uh, that was uh, Samuel Gishoi, Head of Business Development at NCB Investment Bank, and Faith Mwangi, who is also a research analyst, really putting it as it is. Now, remember, you can get the full interview with Job Wanjohi earlier on uh, on our YouTube channel, so that at least you can get the full capture uh, where he analyzed the budget and what it means, especially to the manufacturing sector. For now, be safe and, uh, you know, Bye. Make some kill. All the best. Trading well.